after years of heavy COVID restrictions, signs that some rules are easing. Lockdowns in some cities now lifted, and the need to show a negative COVID test to get into supermarkets or offices has been dropped. The government hasn't said that its zero COVID strategy is ending, but with cases near an all-time high here, it's now rethinking the vast system it's built. It seems ready to allow some people with COVID to quarantine at home instead of forcing every case into government facilities. In Hangzhou, this man was dragged from his couch by COVID workers tasked with taking him to government quarantine. City officials did apologize, but still sent him to quarantine. Sprawling mass quarantine camps are still being built around the country for the probable exit wave of cases. This is normally an exhibition center that's been converted to a makeshift hospital. More than 5,000 beds inside for positive COVID cases and close contacts. These men were just released after 10 days there with mild symptoms. There's nothing to be afraid of, he says, of having COVID. Zero COVID has battered China's economy and supply chains. And fueled nationwide protests that were the biggest show of public discontent here since Xi Jinping took power a decade ago. The COVID system won't exactly be abandoned, but officials will change how people use it. So far, it's uneven at best, like removing testing booths in Beijing, but not the need to test. Barricades still block streets in Shanghai. And digital surveillance tools like health codes still track every place a person goes. The worry here now is the actual virus, as the country goes from zero COVID to everywhere COVID. Three years of heavy controls have left most of the population with low immunity and little experience with COVID. Propaganda here made the virus into something to be feared as it ravaged Western countries like the U.S. Yep. Zero COVID is good, she explains. We should only open the places where there's a few cases. But top officials in state media are now softening their tone on the severity of the virus, bringing the message more in line with what other countries have been saying for more than a year, putting China on the road to reopening, albeit a bumpy one. All right, Janice Mackey Freyer joins us now live from Beijing. Janice, you know, we look at all those images in your piece, and, and it makes us think that we're, we're back in 2020, in the spring of 2020. It looks like nothing has changed in China. You interviewed a man outside one of those COVID quarantine facilities who said there's nothing to be afraid of, but then you see that other image of, of a guy getting pulled off his couch by COVID workers. Do, do people in China live in fear right now of, of the quote-unquote COVID police? Well, I guess the, the balance of fear is changing. Uh, for the most part, people, of course, are happy to have the hard lockdowns and the heavy restrictions lifted, uh, unable to travel between cities, uh, this uh, digital surveillance every single day and every single task, uh, as well as uh, schools being closed. As a parent, of course, I want them to be open. But as we peel back the agony of those restrictions, uh, it's being replaced now with with anxiety over the virus itself. We've had a relaxation of rules before, but when there were very few cases in most cities. Now a city like Beijing is reopening, great, but there's COVID everywhere. And that's a first for a lot of people. Uh, there is a surge of cases that is now expected. Uh, the healthcare system hasn't been tested. Uh, and there needs to be this shift in attitude or mentality uh, towards people having COVID uh, because because of the way it's been demonized over the last few years. So uh, part of the messaging now uh, from state media and top officials is that COVID is not something that should be feared. It's something that should now be woven into whatever phase is next after zero COVID. Janice, and, and, and briefly, because I want to get to this question about vaccines, it's hard to understand what the people of China really want, right? Because you had those massive protests, but we just heard from that woman in your story saying zero COVID has been good. Well, there's a nervousness here. Uh, think about it. When there are restrictions in place, the restrictions may not always be great. They're chafing, they're stifling, they limit your mobility, but there is a sense of... Um, 
consistency across the board in knowing that this system is tracking every single COVID case. Now it's a bit of a free for all um, and they're still putting people into quarantine. It may be home quarantine. It may be mass quarantine. They're still tracking COVID cases for now, but there are just that many more cases. Uh, even a few weeks ago, uh, the leadership here and Xi Jinping uh, was talking about zero COVID in sticking with it, speaking about tackling the virus in war terms. Uh, so there is now the nervousness among people that they're not only going to get COVID, uh, but that they're not going to have this, the, the same sense of uh, when they might. And so that is creating some anxiety. Uh, as well, there's the sense that an exit from this strategy could be as problematic as zero COVID itself. And then finally, Janice, and again, briefly, if you can, with all the resources that have gone into zero COVID, vaccinations there didn't scale up the same way. That, that doesn't make sense. Well, for three years, these controls were, were keeping cases low, and that nurtured this sense of complacency among people. They thought, why should I get vaccinated? The infections are too low. But now, two-thirds of people over the age of 80 are under-vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. A lot of people haven't had a booster shot in over a year. And there is still a ban on foreign vaccines here, including mRNAs, the ones that studies show have been effective against the Omicron variant. So it's going to take some time in order to unwind a lot of these restrictions uh, that people have been living with here. Uh, think about all of the, the, the pain and, and agony that other countries have gone through uh, in living with COVID. And China is just now starting down that road. So there are some tough adjustments ahead. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.